you guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new to my channel welcome to my channel my name is Tony Brianne and in today's video we'll be discussing the hypersexualization of teens and children in Hollywood how are you guys liking the new setup I'm thinking this is gonna be my new setup for 2023 I'm actually in the process after filming this video filming my last four videos of 2022 which is insane I'm so ecstatic for what 2022 has brought for my YouTube channel like it's crazy how much I have grown I'm at 85,000 subscribers I already told you guys I wanted to hit 100,000 by the end of the year the end of the year is next week who knows maybe a miracle could happen <laughs> regardless of whether it happens or not I am just so thankful for all the love and support you guys are amazing and have helped me get through such trying times especially this past week I've gone through quite a bit. Let's just say God gives his toughest battles to his toughest soldiers. But thank you guys so much for an amazing year. My birthday is next week. That's like the coolest thing about my birthday is that I literally turn a new age at the end of every year. I know everybody turns a new age in a year, but I like how I start off January at that age that I just turned and then I end it off with a new age. So I'll be 22 coming up in a week, which is insane, December 30th, so yeah. <laughs> So enough with the chitter chatter and let's get straight into the sponsor of today's video and that is Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is created to make sure that everybody has accessible and safe internet privileges. So if you don't know what a VPN is, a VPN protects you from harmful malware, it stops ads and trackers, it notifies you whenever someone is trying to steal your data. You're able to see all your favorite shows from all around the world. So say you're traveling abroad and you're not able to watch, I don't know, Teen Mom and you can't see it while you're in France. With Atlas VPN, you'll be able to see that show at your convenience. And Atlas VPN will provide you with some of the best savings when you're shopping online. So Atlas VPN is currently having a huge Christmas deal going on right now. This deal provides you three years plus six months free of Atlas VPN for just $1.70 a month. This is an 85% off deal because it's traditionally $11 a month. This deal is currently the best VPN deal right now with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you wanna protect your digital footprint online, please be sure to check out Atlas VPN. They will be linked in the description box. And thank you so much Atlas VPN for sponsoring this part of the video. And without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Once upon a time, sex was seen as more of a taboo topic and people, specifically women and teens, could not overtly speak about their sexual desires. In recent years, that has definitely... Now, in recent years, that definitely has changed with more education when it comes to sexual health and the whole sexual liberation movement. Just overall, open dialogues being more promoted when it comes to parents and their children and within the classroom. Now, this is good news because it is healthy to talk about sex, especially with teenagers because they naturally will have those desires. But in Hollywood, it has been taken to a new extreme. The concept of sex sells has become the catapult of multiple media platforms. From incredibly racy lyrics and songs, to TikTok trends that constantly objectify women, advertisements for men products, whether that's cologne or alcohol, those ads always have to have a woman that is half dressed as the spokesperson or the model for those ads, though the brand has nothing to do with women. And of course, video games, television shows, and movies that are constantly sexualizing their characters, whether that's male or female. The constant need to sexualize everything has to have a negative impact, especially on the youth, right? So in this video, like I stated, we'll be talking about the hypersexualization of teens and children in Hollywood and how it is detrimental to children and teens in the real world. So let's start off with my first talking point. So I want you to think of your favorite TV show or movie that is centered mainly around teens. What are the characters mainly involved in? Now, if my theory is proven correct, you're probably thinking of drugs, alcohol, partying, and of course, sex. These components are almost always the plot line even when it's deemed unnecessary in certain scenes. Now I'm not saying teenagers don't have sex or don't think about sex because that would be ludicrous, but the way it is depicted in Hollywood is that the entire reality of being a teen is just centered around sex and partying when that is not true at all. Dealing with your sexuality and going out with your friends is not the major character development of growing up. It's not the coming of age story. It's a part of it, but it is not the story. On on one hand, it is a good thing that the shows and movies are normalizing teen sexual feelings. Like I stated earlier, back in the day, teens always felt the need to suppress these feelings and they felt it was wrong to have these natural feelings. And truthfully, I don't think that's okay at all. But there are indeed ways to allow teens to know that their feelings are valid without objectifying them. 
However, in Hollywood, that's all they do. Hypersexualizing teen characters can be very harmful, and some popular shows and movies that have come out in recent years that are known particularly for sexualizing teens are Riverdale, Euphoria, Gossip Girl, Pretty Little Liars, and honestly, any horror movie that is centered around teens. These shows often put their teenage characters in very inappropriate situations that can be deemed as problematic, but they rarely discuss the consequences of these said actions, which honestly does more harm than good. So I'm about to talk about each show that I just mentioned and talk about some of the problematic aspects of each one. So let's get into Riverdale. So Riverdale the show is a popular Netflix show that's about a group of friends that are unveiling different dark secrets in their town. A lot of fans have found the show to be incredibly problematic due to them overly sexualizing their teens, like I stated earlier. And it started off fresh off of season one, episode one. So two of the main characters, Betty and Veronica, were trying out for the cheerleading team. And in order for them to get the spot on the show, they did this very sexualized dance and they even staged this spontaneous kiss. Mind you, these women, whether they're really adults or not, were playing 16 year olds. Cheerleaders already have a bad reputation for girls that don't have anything else to offer but their looks and that they're promiscuous and that they don't put in a lot of hard work. This entire scene just feeds more into the connotation that cheerleaders are very sexual. There was another scene where the girl, Betty, the blonde one, Betty once again is supposed to be a 16 year old. She began singing seductively and pole dancing in front of a room of adults. Not only was she pole dancing, she also was strip teasing. So she strip teased into a black lingerie set and she's 16 years old. Nobody batted an eye. And another scene that I'm going to mention from Riverdale was when one of the main characters, Archie, who was supposed to be a 15 year old, had a relationship with a 30 year old but they never discuss the inappropriateness of the relationship. It's more shown as like, oh, this is lust, we shouldn't do this, and not that the fact that that 30-year-old woman was a Something like this happened in another series called Pretty Little Liars, a very popular series in the early 2000s, I'll say like mid 2000s, like 2009 to 2015, 2016, I would say. So one of the main characters, Aria, who was a high school student, ended up falling in love with her high school teacher, a grown man. With this relationship, when Aria came out to her parents saying that they were dating, there was not enough outrage from her parents. Her parents did show some detest towards it, but it was not enough, especially a parent that is raising a teenager and your daughter starts dating her teacher, not just a 30 year old, her 30 year old English teacher. But regardless of her parents' reactions, the show displayed it as the parents being unreasonable and that this couple was in love. Age is just a number. Fans and viewers looked at this couple as goals and they're so cute and a lot of girls were trying to outlive this fantasy in real life whenever they had a crush on a teacher. And this 30 year old grown man even had a scene where he was dressed up in boxers with a bunch of the other high school students as they were trying to do a strip tease for the girls. And once again, it wasn't like a big outrage. It's as if these shows forget how old these girls are supposed to be. I, I just don't understand why so many sexual scenes are constantly going on when these kids are supposed to be kids. Another show that actually I will say has been called out for them overly sexualizing their castmates is Euphoria. The show Euphoria follows a 17 year old troubled girl and her friend group or the people around her that are all having similar issues or just strictly dealing with coming of age. In this show, sex is a very common theme and you see it time and time again. In some instances, sex is used as a mechanism to show your divine femininity and embrace it. For example, one of the main characters, Kat, who will not be on the next season, so sad, but that's besides the point. Kat became a cam girl to define her sexuality, to display confidence, and to demand respect. While it is in fact true that women should be able to control their own bodies and express their sexuality, this is a clear misinterpretation of feminism by male directors, writers, producers, whoever is putting the show together. Her using her sexuality at 16, 17 years old as a plot line not only sexualizes the female body, but it also puts pressure on young girls that are watching the series that thinks in order for them to be confident, they have to use sex as a weapon. And these young girls might try and find some form of desirability in unhealthy ways, just like Kat did, because they feel like that's the way you can become confident. That's the way you can show men how to treat you and respect you, when in fact it's not true, it just sexualizes themselves. And it also can show that your self-worth is just based on your attractiveness and sexuality, when that is not true at all. I also want to mention with Euphoria, a lot of nudity was shown, but more so on the women. Well, 
the kids because these are supposed to be teenagers. There were lots of unnecessary sex scenes, especially when it came to the character Cassie. I felt as if they were objectifying her body a lot because a lot of the scenes were necessary to show her naked. I feel like they used a lot of the scenes of her as nude because she has a bigger chest. She's more curvy. That's what the male gaze would want to see because you don't really see Alexa Demi, who is Maddie in the show, constantly nude all the time. You just see Cassie. These are once again supposed to be teenagers. So why are we seeing teenagers naked. There's a way to display sex. There's a way to display desire without showing a nude body. The whole women empowerment lens that they try to display is very much so implied for the male gaze. And if you don't know what the male gaze is, the male gaze is the act of depicting women and the world and the visual arts and literature from a masculine heterosexual perspective that presents and represents women as sexual objects for the pleasure of the heterosexual male viewer. Once again, objectifying women in the terms of women empowerment, it is clear as day that these Hollywood male executives are objectifying women not only women, but teenagers. Netflix used the same clause of women empowerment in an Instagram post that they made back in 2019. So Netflix posted this photo of some of the Riverdale castmates, the female castmates, and they captioned it this. Verified, I love these three women. I love how honest they are, how they use their platforms to speak on issues they care about, and that matter to young women. And I love that they stand up for themselves and others. With that post, one fan commented this. They use their platforms to speak on women's issues but help in the sexualization of teen girls on their show constantly. LMAO, okay. And Netflix responded with this. I think they play three characters in charge of their sexuality, not three characters being used by or defined solely by their sexuality. Veronica is a bad A businesswoman. Betty is a loyal friend and dedicated sleuth. Cheryl is a LGBTQ student body president icon. Young women shouldn't feel shame for being sexual humans or for feeling confident or sexy in their bodies and they certainly shouldn't be reduced to just that when they have a multifaceted character expression. Netflix thought they ate with that one, but let's be for real. 16 year olds do not need to own their sexuality. What is the purpose of that? Why can't we just have 16 year olds be confident in themselves by speaking up for things that they feel are not deemed correct? That is a young woman that displays women empowerment. Like we gotta be for real. Like stop trying to use the whole women empowerment and sexual liberation as a term to objectify women because that's how it's used a lot of the times. So moving on from Euphoria and Riverdale, let's get into horror movies. Horror movies I'm just going to use in a generic term because it's in every single horror movie. I grew up with my family watching horror movies. That was just our thing. At least 99.9% .9 of those movies I had to cover my eyes at least in one scene. I'm not sure why they like to tie in sex and gore and blood and guts into horror movies. I never understood that. But it's a very common theme. If you ever see a cabin movie or a movie that's centered around teens, maybe even even college students, everybody under the age of 19 years old, they always find some way to have some blatant sex scene where only the woman is being objectified and only the woman is showing her body. It's almost inevitable to see. Think of any slasher movie, Jason, Freddy, whichever, there's always going to be a woman that is supposed to be 16, 17 years old, naked, being super promiscuous, or just doing the most. It's always like that. And I'm not going to take away from the male characters that are also being objectified in those sex scenes, but the woman is the one that always has to show her body and is being displayed in an almost humiliating way. We can be proud of our bodies. We can love our bodies. I'm not saying that body parts should be shunned, but the way that they do it is just so unnecessary in a lot, a lot of scenes. And the next show we're going to get into and the last show I'm going to talk about is Gossip Girl. I will never forget the first time I watched Gossip Girl. I was shook when these kids were supposed to be 15 years old when they looked like they were 27. We'll get into age right after I talk about Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl in general overly sexualizes teens and adultifies them. The main characters were constantly going to nightclubs, sipping on cocktails, publicly drunk, having spontaneous and casual sex as if it had no meaning at all. They threw parties. They were hopping in and out of cabs. Like they had unlimited money. We know that these characters were rich. We do know that. But the way that they display these kids, you would think they were 27 year olds, not even college students. Even the ads for Gossip Girl were overly sexualized. It's always the teen couples making out in lingerie, just doing the most when they're 16. 15 and 16 year olds, if they are sexually active, nine out of 10 times, well, maybe today it's different 
flavor because everybody's trying to be grown, but they're not wearing lingerie in the bedroom. Most have to rush because they're sneaking around, let's be real, but these kids had unlimited time and they were publicly drunk and had to take AA. And I am not saying that that does not happen in real life because I'm sure that everybody has a story, but these were supposed to be functional, healthy kids and they're doing all of this stuff. Like I just never understood that. And that gets into my point when it comes to age. So in Euphoria, the girls were constantly wearing crop tops and mini skirts, but they never had a backpack on their backs. In Gossip Girl, Riverdale, and Pretty Little Liars, the girls were wearing high heels, dark makeup, more revealing clothing in some scenes. Just overall, the characters on the show look remarkably older. Why is that, do you think? Well, I'm gonna tell you what the common reason probably is. Oftentimes, the adults that play these characters are in their mid to late 20s, and this is due most likely to child labor laws. Child labor laws are strict laws regulating how long child actors can stay on set, and if a show needs to film for multiple hours during the day, having a minor on set kind of slows down that process and gets in the way of their content schedule or whatever they need to get shot in a given time. This is why whenever there's like a baby on the show or a toddler, you never see that kid. They're always taking a nap or, oh, they're at my parents' house because they kind of slow down the whole shooting process. And a lot of directors that are running these shows have a timeline and a budget that they need to get done and provide results for it in a given time. So in order to alleviate this problem and stress, Hollywood executives will hire adults to play these teen characters. While adults playing teens is like the obvious solution for this problem, this solution also creates a whole new host of problems when it comes to teens. These adult actors can generally involve themselves in sexual situations on camera, regardless of the fact that they're playing a child or a teen. And this is a big reason and a cause that leads to blatant over sexualization of teens. And you might be thinking, well, Tony, why does it matter? This doesn't affect the real world. Actually, it definitely does. This really affects teens and children because they're looking at these characters and they're confused why they don't have the body of a 27 year old when they're 15. When I was a kid, I would see shows like Degrassi. And I was like, oh my God, like, these girls look so grown up. And I thought when I turned 14, I would look just like them. Mind you, these girls are probably 24, 25, so they have more womanly bodies. So you could only imagine I was shook when I hit 14 and my body wasn't hourglass and like theirs was. And another component that really does affect these kids is that they begin to think that sex is the norm and that they should be having sex because sex is so normalized in these TV shows and movies. So even if a kid is not ready to have sex, they might convince themselves that they are ready because they feel like that's the right thing to do at 15, 16 years old when everyone has their own individual timeline on when they should be ready to have sex. Yes, sex is common among teens in the real world, but also there are a lot of teens that are not having sex in high school. To me, it's odd that these writers would want to put these characters in situations where they act sexy and they're supposed to be minors. Like I think that's really weird and it just goes into the Holly weird concept that so many people have. I think it's fine to depict these characters in sexual relationships. As like I said prior, a lot of teens are in sexual relationships when they do have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whichever. But putting them in overly sexual relationships that's just not realistic for a teen, I think that's a little bit strange because they put them in very adult situations as if these kids have their own apartment or they have their own house and that they're doing things spontaneously. They don't have some somebody clocking their every move. The main harm that comes with over-sexualizing teens in media is the lead to and They start looking at these teenagers as hypersexualized, or they have a different concept of how a teenager should act and they put them more in this adult mind when they're really not. And all I'm gonna say is when it comes to the whole and aspect, who do you think are the main people in these rooms that are directing, producing, and writing these shows? Men. And we're gonna get into that in just a second. There's already a big issue with overly sexualizing teens. If you ask any girl that is in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, whichever, any woman, should I say, they will all tell you when they look like itty bitty teens, because I know me, when I was a teenager, I looked like a little kid, the amount of cat calling that they had to deal with and the amount of objectifying of their body that they had to deal with. These shows, once again, do not help with the fact that men will continue thinking it's okay to cat call women. They will begin thinking that it's okay to sexualize girls, whether she's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, just because she hit puberty and she looks like a woman or she's shapely but that does not mean it is okay. And these shows are giving these predators permission to look at these young women in that way. And I don't wanna not mention men, well, boys. These teenage boys in these shows, they always have to have these rock hard abs. They have to look very adult-like and have these big muscles. And everybody's looking like, oh my God, Chad is so hot, but Chad is 16. Hollywood in general has a history of having an odd infatuation with minors. And this points to a more serious societal problem. And that societal problem is, 
adult men's physical attraction to minors and teens. According to research, the term teen on multiple sites has been the top 10 search terms for several years. Predators are constantly searching up teens on social media and have easy access to them. If you look at the commonalities when it comes to websites, a lot of the popular, I guess, foreplay things is cheerleaders, schoolgirls, women wearing pigtails, 18 year old dot dot dot. And why do you think all these terms are so prevalent? Because people are searching it and they're watching it and enjoying it. Now back to Hollywood, even women in Hollywood have said that when they were teens, they were overly sexualized and put in some very uncomfortable situations. One actress that came out about this was Megan Fox. Megan Fox said that she was overly sexualized when she first joined the industry and she was an actual teenager. She was a kid. And when Megan addressed the situation on air, she was laughed at and not taken seriously. The first time I ever worked with him actually, I had just turned 15 and I was an extra in Bad Boys 2. Really? And yeah, they were shooting this club scene and they brought me in and uh, I was wearing a stars and stripes bikini and a red cowboy hat and like six inch heels. And um, he approved it and they said, you know, Michael, <laughs> um, she's 15 so you can't sit her at the bar and she can't have a drink in her hand. So his solution to that problem was to then have me dancing underneath the waterfall getting soaking wet. And that... <laughs> Perfectly wholesome. At 15, I was in 10th grade. So that's, <laughs> wow. that's sort of a microcosm of how Bay's mind works. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's really a microcosm of how all our minds work. But okay. some, some of us have the decency to repress those right. thoughts. This just shows the common problem that is going on every single day. I mean, we constantly have Hollywood executives being exposed for being so it's not entirely shocking, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't speak about these issues. Both well, TV producers and viewers need to be more conscious of the dangers of sexualizing children. This is definitely an ongoing problem, and I think that both TV show producers and also viewers need to be more conscious of what they're watching and what they're feeding into. And according to several different forms of research done, children and teens, primarily female, are strongly affected by what's displayed in media. So in order for us to protect teens and children, our best bet is to be able to listen, understand, and produce results to alleviate this problem. All right, you guys, so that's the end of this video. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I really enjoy doing this topic, not because it's necessarily a fun topic to talk about, but I think it's really important to discuss. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Of course, always be respectful, be mindful of what you say. Do not be a disgusting imbecile, because I know some of y'all be trying it in these comments, but whenever I talk about like teens and children, a lot of weirdos, mostly men, will come in here and just say the most and I don't have time for that. But thank you guys once again so much for watching. I love and I appreciate the love and support so much. Thank you guys. Love you. Bye. Mwah.